So the first thing you should learn in your martial arts class is how to stand. So today what I want to do is I want to break down four different martial arts styles and their fighting stance. Karate, Muay Thai, Taekwondo, and Wushu Kung Fu. And within each of these styles, we'll take a look at their hands, feet, angles, noggin, and their purpose of the stance. Now, while some are based off of competition, self-defense, or creativity in general, they have more in common than you think. Okay, so, Mr. Josh Brackett, okay. 36 Chambers Muay Thai, let's go. Let's get some... Some stance? Let's stand. Okay. okay. Shoulder width stance, then I think about a shoulder width stance back. If I can draw a line here and touch my foot, I'm a little too close. Okay. So I think about a shoulder width stance here. I like to keep my front foot either at 12 o'clock or a little externally rotated, not internally rotated, which will make it difficult to block kicks. Hips are forward, hands up, nice and relaxed, chin down, tuck that chin like you're gonna hold a tennis ball or something here. I always think about like looking through binoculars. We have our hands up a little bit higher because of elbows, right? So I gotta be able to pick up elbows, so everything's relaxed. Basically, it's easier to block this way. And my hip, my weight is distributed evenly, so that's why you see a lot of marching in Muay Thai. And his lead foot's gotta be you know, able to teep, able to block, the same with the rear leg, nice and relaxed. So kick negating stance, right? right? So you're a little more susceptible to punches, but in Muay Thai with kick and knee and teep and sure, a lot, yeah, right. so I'm Elbows, able to block. Knees. Right, so it, you know, there's gonna be a give and a take with the stance. Sure. So that this, is, can move. this stance has come through like years and years of sport, and being in the situation where, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you like lose points if you're knocked off balance. Right. Like even if you check the kick. Your poise, your balance, your Boom. posture, everything is important when it comes to like stadium Muay Thai where all that stuff, everybody's so good. Right. That it's judged on these little intricate things. Right, so. and, and being in this more squared stance, you have like access to everything. Right. Access to everything, elbows, you can also turn a bunch too. Mm -hmm. Like you, you get access to, to move around And a being bunch. not internally rotated here, yeah, right. I can step through my kick a lot easier. Yeah, what would you say are some of the most common strikes you throw out of this stance? Out of this stance? Deep. Boom. I mean, I throw my punches. Yeah. You're just not able to quite commit quite as much in punching in Muay Thai, right? Yeah. You can still, I mean, you should be able to punch. Don't closer look. quarters on average? Depending on the style, yeah. If you're a clinch fighter, you're gonna be in closer. You're, okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and even the clinch looks sort of similar? Yeah, when I'm in the clinch, you know, everything is here. I gotta be able to frame, block elbows, Stance throw elbows. Similar. How are you keeping your head? Like, do you recommend chin down? Yeah. I'll, I'll just let you in. I definitely How, recommend chin down. You, yeah, well. Don't do this. That's almost a, I wouldn't say never. I mean, you can see guys that get away with this stuff. Yeah, but right. And, you know, I would rather take the punch on my forehead yeah. than all in this, in the money match. In summary, Muay Thai needs access to all of its offensive weapons while also keeping great balance. So a more squared stance, higher hands, and a tucked chin are important. This, along with having a heavier back leg, which allows the front leg to come up, check kicks, and do what's most important in Muay Thai. Okay. So, Master Wright, I came to my favorite Taekwondo instructor. So, my favorite Taekwondo master. And we're gonna talk about the Taekwondo stance. So, if I'm teaching a new student, I wanna have them feet shoulders width, one foot stepping back in front of the other, then from here, you're just gonna raise your arms up in front of your body like this. Interesting right off the bat though. Front hand lower than the back? Yes. Ooh. So I think that's traditionally just because our Taekwondo is fought at a longer range. Yeah, right. I don't have to have a tighter guard. Yeah, right. So I can lower that front hand a little bit more. That's cool. Uh, with anticipation that I have uh, ample space between us. Sure, sure, sure. Feet shoulder width apart. Are you like on a line? Are you a little bit wider? For our self-defense position, if you will, our stance is going to be about shoulders width. Yeah. But if I do my Taekwondo sparring, yeah, yeah, yeah. my hands drop down lower. Sure. My body gets a whole lot more bladed. So I'm turning my chest gear, my, where they get the point, yeah. away from my butt. Just because the distance is so that if you are gonna attack the head, I have yeah, a little right. more time to react. Right. right? It's not gonna be the first. And you can't do hands to the face and take on the spot. Oh, right, okay. So that, that changes things up a lot. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. For sure. Well, also, the hand lower makes sense because the legs come from there anyway. So like here, I'm blocking from an attack that's coming up here more often. Yes, exactly. But down here, it's different. Exactly. Uh, Okay, and okay. we use that front leg cut kick a lot, that front leg side kick. Yeah. So a lot of times now, they're actually using that hand to oh. stop that leg from coming up. Oh, So okay. if you're bringing up that front leg side kick, I might just try to shut it down there and then come inside or come yeah, inside. Yeah, right. If we go over why in sport Taekwondo, 
you're gonna be more sideways. The front leg is very prevalent in sport taekwondo. Yeah. Just because it's the closest thing to you. Sure. Right? So I want the longest reach. So I need my hip forward. Okay. Not only that, but if I'm square and it's uh more open to your kicks yeah, right. as far as the, the point spar. Okay. Whereas in Taekwondo, there's a chest gear. The big thing I need to cover is that chest gear. So yeah. I'm gonna turn that in. So I use that front leg to open. You still have the back leg options. And of course, that makes your spin yeah. a little bit shorter because I'm already- Yeah, right, you're already right here. All you have to do is kind of- this is, this is one thing I'm fascinated with when it comes to stances. What's your head doing? We keep our head up. So you're not keeping your chin tucked because you know, in Muay Thai and boxing, you're gonna get punched in the face. Yeah, right. So you have to have it braced and down, down right? Sure. If you stick your head off, go to sleep. So right. in Taekwondo though, it's it doesn't take power to make a point to the headshot. All yeah. you have to do is have contact. Yeah. Okay. So basically I wanna keep my head as far away from you as possible. Sure, right. Uh, yeah, right. Well it's the furthest distance. It makes sense. It makes sense. Stop calling safe space karate, you jerks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, right. While Muay Thai was more designed to be square and sturdy, Taekwondo was designed to be long and fast. Being that most of their attacks come from the legs, it's important that they mitigate it with a low hand and a high head. That, along with a sideways stance, makes it so you can keep distance and range while also being able to pick up your lead leg and attack at any moment. All right, karate stance, uh, Muay Thai we talked about, is designed to knock people off guard, have all four options, and you kind of give and take a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Like, even if you get touched with a roundhouse, like if you can hit them harder with a better roundhouse, you can knock them off balance, you win. There you go. But karate, the overall theme is touch once, done, ideally. Like whether it's uh, self-defense or whether it's sport karate. So usually what the, the stance looks like, I've got two major stances that I teach. There's like the sport karate stance where it's a little more sideways. We do the thing that you told us not to. Um, and then there's also like our self-defense stance. So for us, if I'm teaching the kids karate class, I teach super similar, a little bit wider, and our hands are further out. And one of the reasons you'll find further out hands in karate is because of the gloves. We don't have gloves. If I sit here and Josh hits me, even if I'm super tight, if it's a hard hit, I, there's still a chance that I'm hitting myself. We want to be able to see a little bit more. We keep our hands further out. You can kind of have like a little variation between palms out and mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But the main like karate thought process is you have your shield on the outside of your body, right? Like the harder, stronger parts of your body are on the outside. So we rotate out. Uh, have to rotate a little bit more on the punches, but the main thought process is mobility, bang, defense, long range, stuff like that. And then sort of the same concept goes for like sport karate. Front hand is usually gonna be a little bit higher in both situations. Usually our front hand will be further out and our back hand will be a little bit further back mm -hmm. and lower that one. More so because you have like time to think and process yeah. because of the further range. Um, and then also you can see a little bit more. Wow, I did a spectacularly crappy job explaining this. For our self-defense scenario fighting stance, our hands are up and longer and further out because there's more of a threat to the head. Nobody punches to the body in self-defense, so it's less of an issue, and which is why our hands are a little bit higher, but when we're sparring or just thinking more competition-based overall, there's a threat to the head from the feet and from the hands. So we have a backhand, which is a little more hard defense designed and a front hand that's looking to parry, touch, and also attack much like the front leg is. Now, what's fun about all these stances is that if you take the Taekwondo and you pull it in tight and you pick up their hands a little bit more, it looks like karate. You do the same thing with karate, tighten it up, hands up higher, well then it looks like Muay Thai. And they become very similar stances because the purpose is sort of the same. Kick people, punch people in the head. Here's where wushu is a little bit different. Modern wushu. Modern wushu. Okay. Uh, also trains Muay Thai with us. What kind of stance do you have for us today? Okay. So in wushu we have five basics. Three of which I think are found commonly okay. in others. So we've got the horse stance. Yeah. We've got the forward bow stance. Okay. We've got the cat stance or empty stance also. Yeah, right. Um, but two particular that I felt were unique. And it was then that Amari put me through the resting pose and the crouching pose. Now, modern wushu is designed to push your body to its limits, not necessarily to pit it against someone else's body, which is fine. However, and again, you're training these certain 
extreme ranges of flexibility. Yeah, right. <laughs> For continuity's sake, we move towards the front bow stance, which looks pretty similar to some karate stuff. What did you call it? The front bow stance? Yeah. Like a staff? Uh, like a bow and arrow. Oh. Uh, front leg is bent. Okay. Back leg is straight. Okay. Um, it's better if you're not like on the same exact line. Okay. If it's a little staggered, it'll give you a little bit more balance. Okay. Um, back toe is turned out 45. You try to keep your hips forward, although we do also have a side bow stance where your hips are open. Okay. But for the forward one, you are forward, and then the lower you can go. The better. Again, the better. Yeah, Ideally, right. you want your front thigh parallel. So, hands. Yes. You guys have this chamber here. What's this about? This is where we, so this is our ready position. Okay. Uh, so when we hold stances, typically we'll hold our fists or we'll hold our palms. Ooh, palms too. Okay, go, that's Because we cool. go between the two. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. So, but the punches come from here though. Everything's derived yes. from yeah. this lower. Yes, that's correct. This lower sideways. Yes. And actually there is a reason for this. Okay. It's an elbow to the oh, back. Oh, interesting. I would say this stance is, is the most similar then. Like the difference is like the level, the angle, the, the depth, but which makes sense because we talked about how Wushu was the more extreme version of these movements. Very artsy, but also like developmental for your body. Curious, do you guys have like a specific position that you try and have your head in most of the time? So we do like to keep our head up. Head up. And back. Okay. So it's very like one thing you'll always hear me repeat with my students uh -huh. is Head up, chest out, shoulders back. And well, look, even look up a little bit because sometimes if they have the tendency to go down, if they think looking up, they're gonna pick their head up. Yeah, you get that a lot with kids. Like kids are shyish in general. Is this like looking down, like unsure of the kata or the form? Yeah. In which, in this case, the form needs to be loud, exuberant, strong. It's very showy. <laughs> very showy. Uh, curious on this. So you you mentioned side bow stance. Do you change the feet angle too, or just your hips? Hips. So your feet sort of stay the same, and you twist the body a bit more. Yeah. Huh. Because we also have a side horse stance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it would be similar where you're not changing your feet, you're just changing your... Turning your angle. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, well, that's actually super interesting, and I'm glad we brought this up. Because, do that facing this way. Okay. Okay, now... Pull in your front foot and get taller and taller. Pull in yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here. Okay. That looks like like Muay Thai stance. That looks oh. like. And then you said you have your side one. Yes, uh, the side one's where you're a little bit open. Now that looks like karate and taekwondo. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Which brings us full circle, really. We talk about traditional martial arts and how they seem different than they used to be. Well, they are. What usually happens is over time, people tend to not like how violent they are. So they go one of two ways. They either turn into a sport that more people can do, or they turn into an art. And when this happens, you tend to get a different purpose for the practitioners. And like we mentioned, the fighting stance is heavily derived from its purpose. Do I want to keep balance and structure? Do I want to move fast and touch? Am I trying to impress judges with deep, low stances or high flying acrobatics? All of these things greatly changes the small, very first thing that we have to learn in martial arts. And that's our stance.